Hello everyone, I'm Andy Machen, I'm Head of Creative at Branded3, uh, I head up the design team there and I also run a lot of the creative strategy across the company as well. And I've managed to make the screen go blank, um, although I'm not entirely sure how there, maybe not that one, there we go. And I'm going to talk to you about something, uh, an idea I came up with really, which is about engagement rate optimization. We always talk about the performance of our online sites and, and our digital assets has been very much about conversion. Uh, I wanted to get this idea across about, we should be thinking a bit more about how to optimise the engagement. And it was after a, an experience I had on this site, which you're probably all very familiar with. Um, you probably used it yourself. Um, and it's uh, me and the wife went on to buy a new iPhone 6. Uh, we went through the process. It's a really good process. It converts really well. Obviously, they've got the product to back it up. Uh, and we went through the checkout, all on, all on the Apple Store. Uh, and we got to the end, and we got the email saying, thank you very much. Uh, and lo and behold, you come back to the web, the, the front page, and it's trying to sell you an iPhone 6. And it just didn't seem to make much sense. You know I've just bought an iPhone. Why are you trying to sell me an iPhone again? It seems like a really big missed opportunity because if they took any time to know us, they know that we're quite active. And it wouldn't take much to figure that out. You know, we've been customers of theirs before. And they've actually got a big range of products that they could bring to the front then. Well, you've just bought the iPhone. We know you're into sport. Why don't you have a look at some of this stuff? And they're high ticket items as well. These aren't small. And it feels like, it's even a bit frustrating because it feels like they just don't care at that point. They've, they've, they've taken the iPhone, right, we're just going to sell you an iPhone 6. And sure enough, a week later, we get an email saying, are you interested in the new iPhone 6? No, actually, uh, we're not. And it's, it's, it all comes back to this model around conversion uh, and, and the problems that, it, it, it kind of, uh, that are inherent in it. Um, and it's a model that everyone uses. You know, the brand will put out an offer. We have something to sell. Um, we ho they hope we hope as, as brands that people will respond to that advert and then ultimately go on to convert. Um, and doing this for hundreds of years, I guess, um, it's led to this environment where we're now absolutely saturated with offers um, to the point where, look, as, the, as the picture said, we're surrounding to it. We're even starting to develop things like banner blindness and things like that because there's just so much of it. And there's nowhere really more prevalent um, than display ads. Um, there's 5.3 trillion display ads served in the US alone last year, and that's a 25% increase on 2009, so it's a massive growth still, and uh, it's going to continue to grow. Um, but from all of them display ads um, that were actually um, uh, shown or served, if you want to say it, um, click-through rate average of about 0.1%. Uh, some of them as low as 0.04%, uh, that's the small kind of 400 pixel ones. Um, really devastatingly low effectiveness really. Um, it's so much so that actually statistically you're more likely to survive a plane crash. It's just phenomenal, right? Just don't click on any banner ads before you get on the plane. So we're in this world of where we need to have this incredibly high reach to have any hope of any conversion. We're in a world of high reach, really, really low conversion. Why? Some people talk about it being ADD, you know, attention deficit. Um, are we just are we in a world now where you know we're, re we're rewired in some kind of way? Um, but there's a great quote from Jerry Seinfeld saying there's actually no such thing because as long as you're engaging with something or in with someone, there's no end to your um, attention span. You could sit and watch a film for three hours and be really, really hooked in. So there's no real such thing. It's actually the relevance. It's marketing relevance deficiency or deficit, whatever you want to call it. And with low relevance, actually comes low conversion because it's just not relevant to us. That 99.9% .9 of display ads that were shown just weren't relevant to us at that time. Why? Because we all live in our little moments and we're all having unique experiences in those little moments. Everyone in the room at the moment, some of them might be thinking, oh yeah, I like what you're talking about there, Andy. Some of you will be going, what on earth are you talking about? The, the experience for all of us is utterly unique. Um, you'll see this every day on the tube. Um, guy on the left there just bought some new Oakleys. He's, uh, wondering where to go mountain biking for the weekend. Um, next guy's probably looking for a new job. Next chap might be doing a review of a product he's just bought. This chap just doesn't know where he's left his wife. So, <laughs> but they're all surrounded by the same adverts, none of them paying any attention to that. They're all in their own little unique moment in their own little world, and they're only interested in what's relevant to them at that time. And it's not about the demographics of each of us. It's about where we are at that specific moment. And it might be where we are, what we're listening to, what we feel like eating. I may have never expressed a, an interest in pizza um, in my, any of my digital uh, fingerprint or footprint, whatever you want to call it, but at that time I might just be really interested in some pizza. And it might be about how you're feeling, it might be who you're with. 
And the great thing is, these moments are served up every single day. 35 billion moments served up by Google every single day. Searches. People are doing searches and showing an express interest in a relevant moment at that time. That's a lot. And it's only going to get more because as we start to uh, develop new technology and hardware, then those moments can actually become implicit rather than explicit. Because we could be walking down the street with a new Google Glass and it, we will probably all do it at some point. Um, it, it's going to happen. Um, and we might look at a picture of a, uh, an offer in a travel agent window and there might be some way to actually identify that. I've shown some interest in going to Lanzarote, for instance. Or it might be that it can see that, you know, maybe my eyes are getting tired. And you might decide to say, okay, how do you fancy a Starbucks? Your nearest one is over there. Google bought up Nest um, for a ridiculous sum of money. Um, some people think it's quite a sinister reason that it might be that they'd be able to sell you fire extinguishers if your house burns down. But all they're trying to do is try to understand you in the, mom in the moments of your life. They want to know about your comings and goings. They want to try and learn more about you, your offline habits, than, um, because you're not always online. They want to try and piece everything together, and that's why they're buying into these technologies like Glass and Nest. The Google Fridge, this is um, something I'm pitching to them. It's, they haven't got back to my email yet. But um, again, it's, we're all about the connected uh, fridge and the, uh, the, you know, the internet things, but. Again, it just provides opportunities for moments. You've run out of milk. Why don't you get a message to your phone saying, why not buy some now? Fine, click, you're done. And it's about, I need milk in that moment. It's not about the weekly shop or trying to get me into a store. It's telling me what I need at that point. It might just know that you've got some fish in the fridge. Well, what do you like this wine that goes really well with it? And again, it might be a totally different suggestion, but it might be able to actually engage and advise me on different things. Um, like I say, I'll let you know when they get back to me, but it's not looking likely. Berg um, actually went away and they developed um, this product kind of demonstrate this way of thinking and it's a washing machine um, that when you run out of powder, um, when that box is empty, there's actually a button on it that you just press and somebody gets delivered to you in the post. And it's a really great example of, right, it's kind of that in the moment marketing, incredibly relevant to you at that time because I need conditioner and I need washing powder right now. So you can click it and it'll go onto your phone and it even knows that you, um, you know the brand you like and it'll just order it straight from Amazon. And it can even tell you when it's broken down and even go and recommend a, a plumber in your area. So the washing machine will do this for you. Really highly relevant, really in the moment, really individual to your circumstances at that point. So now we're talking about a developing world which is very low reach but incredibly, incredibly relevant. And that suggests a very new model of thinking about things where these moments exist and the way we um, the way we demonstrate these moments is usually through a search um, of whatever it might be that we, we need. It's for the brand then to make sure that they come across as relevant in that moment um, and then from that we can then start engaging with them, engaging with the person and saying this is what you actually need. Because ultimately what the, the route this actually takes is that we're all going to be marketing to an audience of actually one person and it might seem a little bit um, scary to try and think in those terms these days, but it's, it can be done and I will show you how to do it. So how do we become relevant to one? You've got to really know your audience. Now, a couple of uh, years ago, my wife gave me her Christmas list, uh, and on there was uh, uh, some earrings and some perfume. Um, that's fine, so we went off and bought them and, and I let the lads buy that for her. Um, and the present she got from me was a slanky. Uh, if you've never seen one, it's a marvellous thing. It's a blanket with two arms, it's fantastic. That's not my wife, by the way. She wouldn't let me take a picture of her. Um, she, and she kind of opened it, and she was in it. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah. Put it to one side, and she, she cooed over the earrings and perfume. Um, but two years later, the ear earrings and perfume have moved on. She's got new ones there now, but the slanket is something she will wear every single night. And the reason I bought it for her is because I know she gets cold in the evening because she always pinches my jumpers. I know she gets tired in the evening because she's got to look after the two kids. Uh, I bought it in green because I know that's her favourite colour and it matches her eyes. Um, and it's, that's now the thing that she absolutely loves. And, but the only thing is, any marketer could have said, yeah, 30 something woman, she'll like earrings, she'll like perfume. But unless you really, really know p people, we're not going to find the opportunities to find the thing that's really relevant to them. And it's engagement that allows this, because if we don't actually start engaging with people, it's only through years of, um, uh, of me being married to her and starting to get to know her. I still think I don't know, I don't, I'm really not sure. Um, that it allows us to understand these things and identify these opportunities. And it's from that that I've kind of developed this model um, that I think I'd like you to take away and try and plot where you are on this. 
and it's about how you can persuade people through their activity and um, their experience with you how you can actually try and persuade that decision through engagement rather than just relying on the conversion. And it's called the decision experience model, which is a bit of a naff title, sorry, it's the best I could think of. Um, the idea is, on this, on this chart, um, is the information and the engagement needed for someone to make a decision. So along the bottom, we've got the knowledge required to make that decision, and that's usually su um, supplied by content. And on the left is the complexity, and the best way to describe us is what is the most relevant or the most important things to me to make this decision. And I'll explain a bit more as we go along. So if you've got something that doesn't really need any knowledge to buy and doesn't really need any engagement to buy, then it's fine, we can facilitate that deal. And that's where the web kind of started. Paperclip, let's use that as an example. You don't really need to know anything about it. There's no real personal um, effect to you. And when you buy that paperclip, you can just go and buy a paperclip. That's fine. But then there's also... Um, items that we need content for and we need to have the knowledge for. A really simple example might be buying a book. You're not going to just go and buy a book, you're going to read the back cover, you're going to see what is this book about. I'm, I'm, going, to, uh, I'm going to be interested in this book. And that's where content helps us and that's where content strategy comes into its own. Um, and then when it comes to the complexity though, that's when we start to need the engagement. And an example being, um, you'll find most travel sites yeah, in, in fact, I'd say most of them on the, in, in the UK currently rely on you kind of knowing what you're looking for. So, okay, where do you want to go? Paris, Berlin, uh, Berlin, Barcelona. When do you want to go? How many people are going? That's fine. We've got the content to handle that. We can tell you about um, uh, those destinations. We can tell you about the flights. But actually, how many people actually sat there? I don't know where I want to go, actually. I don't know if, I don't know if Barcelona is great for families because that's, you know, that's something that's really relevant for me. Are we going to be safe there walking at night? Because that's a concern of mine. But no one's ever going to know that until you start engaging with them and start asking them those questions. Because if you can do that, if you can start asking those questions, okay, tell us a bit more about what you want from your holiday. Then you can provide the relevant content, and that's when it becomes an experience unique to them. So I could go on and use a tool that might say, okay, you've got family of, uh, it's family of four, you want something that's really child-friendly, have you considered these destinations? It's personalised that content to be relevant for me. And I'll show you a great um, case study of how effective this can be a, a little bit later. And we've matured really well down at this bottom part. You know, we, at the beginning of the internet, we were, we were just all about the selling, but then we've started developing our content strategies and we've moved really nicely into, into this kind of space. Um, but it's up there where the magic really happens. Because like I say, if, it's, if we can understand users' motivations and concerns through engagement, then we can actually start to personalize and create a unique experience for them on our digital channels. Uber's a great example of this. Because really, it doesn't do any more than phoning Tamworth taxis. All it does is take the content that you need about where the taxis are, how much it's going to cost, the complexity which is about where you are and where you want to be uh, and how long that's going to take and it just turns it into an experience. They're not offering champagne or anything more than uh, Tamworth taxis are offering but they've taken it and made it incredibly unique to you, where you are, where you want to be and where your nearest taxi is and how much it's going to cost. And it's one of the reasons it's taken off so, so well. It's what turns the wide fridge into a, a an actual a, a piece of kit that can actually help your life. Um, and I wanted to have a quick look at fashion as well because it's a, it's a really good example because it's something that people have struggled with online um, since I've started in digital, a good 16 years. Um, so let's say, for example, we want to buy a T-shirt. Now, we could go on Amazon, we could buy a T-shirt. It's there to facilitate that purchase. Now, ASOS have added a layer on top of that because they've added the content. They've got some great community-based content. They've got the uh, content around, around its actual uh, initial premise, which is the as seen on screen, so it's suggesting some content. And it's got some great style blogs and things like that, and that's why it's doing so well. On the other hand, you've got people like Thread. Uh, if you're not familiar with these guys, uh, do go and check it out. It's really interesting. Again, it's all about buying clothes, but there's, nothing, there's no shop for you to browse. Instead, what you do is you put in your preferences. Again, it's asking you what's relevant to you. You pick out some brands, you pick out some budgets, and then you get assigned an actual personal stylist who will then start sending you outfits and recommendations which you can then go on to buy. So it's incredibly personal and relevant to you about what you want to actually get. But who's actually doing that as an experience? Well, no one really. No one's really cracked this part. But the great thing is that um, actually it's going to be those on the high street that are going to have the advantage because they're going to be the ones that are going to be able to deliver that experience. So I'll be able to go onto the website and uh, see some great content 
maybe get some kind of stylist that says, okay, so you like that, but what's, you know, ask you a few questions about what you need. And then why not go into a store and have that outfit ready uh, for you to actually try on? It bec becomes a complete experience uh, in fashion, fashion purchasing. And Burberry, we're really close in getting it right. Uh, I don't know if you uh, read the stories earlier in the year when they actually launched a really high-tech digital store. Um, so the staff walked around with iPads, there was virtual changing rooms, there was all kinds of digital displays going on all around that. The problem was it wasn't connected to anything else. It was an experience unique to that environment. So as lowly people that live in Leeds, we probably never ever go in there. Um, totally missed the opportunity to be able to con con connect that up with some kind of application with the website so that you're browsing through product. Maybe an option there to go say, would you like to go and try this on now? Um, it'll be ready for you 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Go into the shop. Oh, Mr. Machin, you're here. That outfit you're on, you know, you were interested in it. So it's waiting in the changing room there for you. Here's some other other things that you might be interested in. Missed opportunity, um, but it does feel like this is where the high street might end up going. Uh, and guess what? Guess what? I switched it off. Um, that's what Google wants to see as well. You know, it isn't interested in sites that have got really poor content, low engagement, no real value. That's what AdWords is going to be for, right? He wants to deliver the sites that are going to have relevant and unique experiences for all of us. Um, and so to answer the question finally, why should brands start to optimise their website? Well, engagement fuels that personalisation part. Unless we start to learn something about people, we're not going to be able to personalise the content for them. So the, the first thing we need to do is start understanding our customers a bit better. Not through just simple demographic research, but actually talking to them. Um, Personalization then creates the relevance for us. Uh, again, there's a quick case study at the end where it shows just how effective this is because it's the relevance that leads to that experience, that unique experience for you because all that content is based around just being absolutely unique for you. Um, don't panic. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, This is the way the, um, the world of digital is going, but it's really important we actually start now because we need to start gathering that information about our users, start developing the platforms that are actually going to allow us to do this. Um, and it doesn't have to be massive steps. We don't have to take you know, giant leaps forward. Um, this is an example. I saw Monarch uh, speaking at a, a seminar not long ago, and they showed this example. This isn't actually live yet. They've only just put it through testing. Um, but they've just done some really simple things. So if you search for flights for Leeds to Barcelona, when you arrive at this, um, all those content pods, guess what? They're all filled with Leeds to Barcelona content because it's understood where we've, what we searched for, what our intention was, and it's personalised the content for me. The, um, the search boxes and that are already pre-populated. Now, then takes it a little bit of a step further. So if I start saying, okay, it's two adults and two children, the next time you come back to this page, it's now got pictures of families on a beach enjoying um, Barcelona. So again, it's, maybe, it's just tweaking the little bits of content and again, showing where you can go in Barcelona, things to do for families, but also similar things. So, all right, you, you've been interested in Barcelona, have you considered Madrid? Things like that. And just off the back of that one small test and one tweak, uh, they actually found that they had a 30% less uh, decrease in bounce rate. Um, well, why wouldn't people, why wouldn't you bounce when it's actually relevant to you now? Um, and an increase of 30% just off the home page alone. Now that's just off that landing page that they've tried this. And that's a phenomenal result. So you can imagine what you do that to your entire digital platforms, what difference it can actually make. So I guess the homework for you uh, is to go in and have a think, where are you? Um, are you just <coughs> facilitating? Is there anything you can do in terms of being able to learn more about your audience? Is there anything you can ask of your audience? Again, it doesn't have to be a huge technical imp implementation. It might be just a series of questions that you ask on the homepage that might lead them through to some more tailored content. You can start tracking those, those journeys and understanding a bit more about them. But the important thing is we actually just start this now so that you are in a position where you have all this information before your competitors, essentially. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, I hope it meant something to you. Thank you very much. <coughs>